Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is a very special one. He won the Canadian Nationals, or the equivalent of that, the Vancouver Pro-Am, a few weeks ago. And this same day, or I say the next day, he entered the pro ranks and placed fifth at his first pro show uh, in classic physique. The man I'm talking about is Isaac Bear. Welcome to the show. Hey, Dave. Thanks for having me. Wow, what a what a crazy uh, a crazy night you had, or a crazy weekend I should say you had at the Vancouver Pro Am. You turned pro in classic physique, and then you you went and competed in the pro division, and you placed top five all in the same weekend. Yeah, it was uh, pretty overwhelming, that's for sure, man. Especially cracking the top five in the pros, being ten pounds under the weight limit. Yeah, did you uh, did you have every intention of doing that, or that was just kind of like a last minute thing? They said, hey, you won, you want to do the pro show? Why don't you jump in? Yeah, I mean, if I did win the card, I told myself, I'm already here, I'm already conditioned, you know, I may as well roll into the pro show and see how I do, right? And if anyone didn't know you were from Canada, you just tipped your hat right there with a little bit of that A. A, a. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Either that or you're from Wisconsin, and I don't think you're with, from Wisconsin with that accent. Talk to me a little bit about, I mean, you. this is not an overnight sensation type story that you have. You've been doing this for almost 10 years now. You've been banging away, first in bodybuilding, obviously switching to classic when that came out. Um, talk to me, how did you get your beginnings? Where, where did you first get introduced to bodybuilding and, and what made you decide you wanted to, hey, do this maybe at, at, at a higher elite level? Um, yeah, I got into bodybuilding at 18. It was just, um, growing up, I always idolized, like, you know, like a Hercules-like physique. And uh, a friend of mine, she won her pro card. And at 18, I was like, how did you look like that? You know, and I always grew up reading, you know, the magazines and stuff like your um, your articles in Muscular Development and um, did one show and I was hooked. Ever since then, I've just done a show year after year trying to just be a better bodybuilder. You know, it wasn't necessarily, I'm going to go pro and be famous. I just did it because I loved it, man. Were you doing well in bodybuilding competitions, or were you not doing so well? And then when Classic came out, you started, you know, really, you know, shining. No, I, I did really well. Um, I won a few provincial shows. I won some overalls, and then when I got to the national stage, I did my first national heavyweight class at 24. Right. And I placed 15th. Ooh. So that kind of was like a buzzkill, right? Especially yeah. after winning a bunch of shows. And then the next year, Classic came out, and I was kind of on the fence because dropping from 220-pound stage weight to dropping down to 200, that was like, a, oh wow, you know, the, goal of the bodybuilder is to get bigger and not get smaller, right? Sure. So I gave it a shot. I placed tied second at the 2017 Nationals, ended up getting third, and that kind of lit a new fire under me. I'm like, hey, maybe, maybe I can do well in Classic. And then the next year, I ended up winning my pro card in Classic. So, yeah, it was a good switch. How do you lose 15 pounds of muscle? What, how did you do that? Tons of cardio, man, <laughs> and no food, barely. Just had to burn it off. It, it was really hard, yeah. Now, is it, is it easier now that you've gotten down to weight once to make that weight again? or And, and, and how do you train in the off-season now? Do you have to just do maintenance-type training? Yeah, well, that's exactly it, right? So I basically maintenance training I couldn't grow at all you know because making 200 was a struggle fortunately this year they upped the amateurs to 205 right. so that five pound difference was uh it was good but still trying to make you know 205 when you walk around at 255 is it was tough man it was, it was really tough you, you pull the Cody Montgomery now um in the pro ranks you're going to be able to weigh what 215 215, yeah. So I can have a good, nice off season and, you know, try and put on some quality muscle. <laughs> it's ironic. You have to strip off all this muscle. Now you got to go put it back because now you're yeah, too small uh, in the I, class, you know. The yeah, ironies. I'm excited now because I can actually train. You know, I can actually lift some heavy yeah. weights and eat some food instead of eating like a bird and worrying about putting on an extra pound of how hard it's going to be to take it sure. off, right? Don't, don't you think, I mean, I, I think it should be this way. Don't you think the classic amateur weight should be the same as the pros? I think it should be close. I should say a five-pound difference just because I feel like as an amateur, 
with the weight increase, it gives the amateur guys to really now develop a better physique going into the pros, right? So right. I, I kind of like the weight difference, but I mean, five pounds would be ideal for sure, not yeah. 10. Now, you uh, have an interesting uh, training, I guess, methodology. Um, for those viewers out there who watch all our programming, I did a couple programs on DNA analysis where you can actually get your DNA read. As a matter of fact, my DavePalumbo.com website has DNA kit kits. You can order them and, and you send them in and the lab up in Canada where uh, we're going to talk about in a minute, test your DNA and we'll tell you what you're strong in, what you're weak in, and uh, you know what you have mutations in, what you don't have mutations in. Uh, and you kind of uh, had that done. You had your DNA tested, and you work with Carmen Tuchinik over there, who does who's the DNA diva, you know, who we had on the show, and who uh, I work with, and who did my DNA. And tell us about how that that training went, and how that differed from things you had done in the past. Well, with the DNA, we really dialed down the foods that my body could break down. Right? You know, I we found out I have a gluten sensitivity, lactose sensitivity, so we, we really avoided any of those foods during prep. Um, we found out um, my body has high iron production, so we used proper supplements to battle that, which helped my chronic fatigue, and with not being fatigued, I was able to train harder, train better. And with the DNA testing, with all the proper supplements and vitamins, it actually got my metabolism very, very healthy. So I was able to do only 30 minutes of cardio this prep versus, you know, 80, 90 minutes. And I only started 30 minutes of cardio five weeks out from my show versus, you know, 80 minutes for a full 16 weeks, right? So the DNA really just catered everything down. You know, it made me go from a Ford Focus to a Ferrari, I guess. It works. It worked really well. Right. How, how did you combat that iron issue you had? We would incorporate a, a higher dose of calcium with every meal. And the calcium helped combat that iron. So, yeah, it worked well. And there's actually quite a few more things I need to sit down with Carmen and go over. Because we basically did the DNA and went straight into prep. But um, we didn't use any fats this prep because my body doesn't utilize the fats properly either. So that was a big change compared to previous preps where I had a whack load of fats, right? So right. it worked well. Would you, are you going to reuse them again and you're going to stick with this approach? I mean, was it not enough to convince you that this is what you need to do? Oh, man, 100%. Like, as you know, like I've been competing nine years. I've done everything from, you know, everything you can think of to get ready for a contest, right? But this was by far the easiest, most enjoyable prep I've ever had. You know, 10 days out from my show, I was out golfing and that's unheard of, <laughs> you know, usually 10 days out from a show, I'm sitting in my room with the lights off, just trying not to eat everything in sight. But right. yeah, this prep was good, man. It was, I'll, I recommend it to anyone and it's good in the health aspect of things, right? It's not necessarily just bodybuilding, Yeah. but it helps find, you know, you can find chronic diseases through your genetics and stuff like that. So just on the whole spectrum of health, if I can be healthy, and be a better bodybuilder, you know, why not, right? Yeah, no, it's a, it's it's great. When I had my DNA tested, I, I'm glad I did because I found out that I, I don't have any real predisposition for like uh, Alzheimer's or dementia, which I'm convinced that I'm getting now because my dad is like going through it and like yeah. I see him every day and I'm like, oh no, I'm, I, I can't remember anything either. But I have my yeah. DNA, my DNA is working in my favor for this one. So hopefully, you know, the, the DNA test was right. But really, it does. It puts your mind at ease for certain things, and it makes you alert to other things that you didn't even know that you should worry about and maybe supplement with and, and, and be aware of. So uh, I recommend everyone to do it. Once again, if you want to get tested, I have these kits on the Dave Palumbo site. You send away. We send you the kit. You swab your cheek. You put it in the vial. You send it away. They, they will call you up then, and they will give you, and they'll email you all your DNA analysis, and they'll go over it with you, which is great, explaining to you what you know, you're good at, what you're not good at, and what you have to be aware of. So, um, and once again, if you want to work even more in depth with, with a trainer, like you can call Tar Carmen Tuchinik herself and, and work with her. But uh, I, I love science. I love when people can employ science to make themselves better at what they do, Isaac. And I think that you have done that and maybe gave yourself an advantage. And maybe some of your competitors will, will, will want to do their DNA now to see what you did to help uh, you, you beat them. Yeah, so, man. That's, I'm all about promoting healthy bodybuilding, right? So yeah. I've had a few people reach out already asking about it, and I'm all for it getting them to do it, so. 
Why not? Yeah. Now, when the IFBB Amateur League split with the Pro League, obviously Canada was split down the middle, which is kind of weird because most countries either go with one or the other. And yeah. Now the Canadian Nationals and the uh, what was the Canada Cup? Was that the other show that they had up there? Um, is no longer really a part of the IFBB Pro League, you know, qualifying series. So they're using what the uh, the, the Vancouver Pro Am and they're using the Toronto Pro Am, I believe, right, in replacement of those two shows. Is that correct? Yeah, we, they call it the Canadian Physique Alliance now. Right. So it's supposed to be the exact same as NPC rules and judging and right. stuff like that. Right, which is great. But don't you think that they should change the name of the shows to make it sound a little more prestigious? Because, I mean, yeah, you won the Vancouver Pro-Am and turned pro, but you know, it would be much better if you could say, I'm Mr. Canada or something like that. <laughs> yeah, you know, that would have been a good title to have for sure. But, I mean... That's just the way they're doing it, right? So you just got to take it as it is. Yeah, I think they should change it to the Mr. Canada. You know, just I, I, I really believe they should bring back the Mr. America uh, title because I thought that was like the greatest title to say you're Mr. America, you know I mean? Well, Come on. and that's old school bodybuilding yeah. up until now. Everyone's like, oh, are you, are you Mr. Universe now? Or right. Are you Mr. <laughs> Canada now? I'm like, uh... I'm Mr. Vancouver pro am <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you're still an IFBB pro, and that's all that really matters. And you yeah, actually have a top I, five finish and some Olympia points uh, for the Olympia uh, thing. Are you done competing this year? Yeah, I'm done. Just, um, you know, I really want to add the, the, the feedback I got from the judges was really good. You know, they were happy with everything. It was just add some size to your upper body, Yeah, which is... You know, 10 pounds is a lot of muscle to put on. So I'm going to do the Toronto Pro next year. Since being Canadian, I feel my next pro show should be in Canada. Right. And um, I think Toronto Pro gives me enough time to add the 10 pounds that I need to be a competitive pro. Yeah, you know, plus the fact that, you know, you, you already had the muscle on your body. So it shouldn't be that, it shouldn't take that long to get back the muscle that you lost, which is, yeah, which well, is an advantage exactly. for you, I guess, you know. Yeah, 100%. Comes back pretty quickly. Well, I want to just congratulate you, Isaac, once again on the big win uh, the, and the, yep. the big top five placing in the pros, I think, which is even more impressive. And uh, keep up the great work, and uh, we're looking forward to see you on stage next year, 10 pounds bigger. Okay, man. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure. All right, and that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time.